Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna take you through the process step-by-step -step of migrating your WordPress website from whatever host you have it at right now to WPX. Now, I've been through this process a couple of times before, but today I'm gonna to take you through real time do everything from you know changing your DNS records to actually moving the physical website from one host to the other, making sure that everything's in place up and running so that there's zero downtime for your users. Now, um, WPX does offer a free migration service, I think, for the first of your website. So if you have more than one website, you might have to do it by yourself or maybe you have to pay for it, I don't know, but I just prefer to do it myself so there's no waiting around time and I'm in control of it. So any um, anything like that, if you're interested in it, let's go ahead and get on into the tutorial here. All right, so the website that we're gonna be moving is tonyteaches.tech, okay? And I did a little bit of um, running some speed tests here and right now we'll, we'll we'll look at this now and we'll look at this at the end of the video after we're done moving it so right now i have a performance score of 47 out of 100 which is not that good and you'll see down here that the you know best case scenario is right around three seconds for the page to be delivered you know regardless of where you are in the world so we want to get under the two and a half second mark here let's see what we can do for um as far as like WPX hosting is concerned, if it's any better than what I'm currently hosting at now, which is Vulture. Okay, so first step here is to log into the WordPress admin dashboard of your current website. So you can do that, go to your website slash WP admin, go ahead and log in. And when you're in here, we're gonna install a plugin. So we're gonna go to the plugin section, add new plugin, upload a plugin, no, sorry, no, not upload. We're gonna search for a plugin. Um, it's gonna be called Duplicator. Okay, so search for that, and it's gonna be one of the first results here. You want the one by Snap Creek. So go ahead and install that now, and then activate it. Now, um, you'll see here on the left-hand side that the Duplicator plugin is added to your menu, so click on that. And the first thing you wanna do here is to create a new, I think they call it an archive. So just click on that and all the defaults here are um, fine. Just leave everything the same, the name, storage, archive, installer. Go ahead and click on next. And now it is looking through a website to build up like an archive, a zip file of everything. It has done that. It's gonna be right around 300 to 400 megabytes. That looks good. We got all good marks. Go ahead and click on yes, um, that you are sure that you wanna continue and build that archive. So this step takes a little bit of time um, let me see if there's anything we can do while that's working. And let me, let me show you a little bit around, um, WPX. So, um, and yeah, we can, we can do this. We can do this while this package is being built. So, um, go ahead. If you don't already have WPX, you can sign up for an account. And then once you do have an account, you can uh, log into it and go into your services and then go ahead and click on your hosting. And here is um, the dashboard for that for me. And what I wanna do is go into my manage websites tab here and start to add a new website. So this website, it's asking for the top level domain. It's gonna to be tonyteaches.tech, okay? And we don't wanna install WordPress. We can just add the, the website by itself, the domain name, it's gonna be an empty website. Click on add website. And this will take a little bit as well. It's um, saying that it's gonna be working in the background. We'll get a notification a little bit up in the upper right hand corner when that's finished. Uh, so let's go back over and see how the package installer is doing. And it's done, so that's perfect. So let's go ahead and um, download these two files. So the installer file right here and the archive file. That one will take a little bit longer. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up a finder window and move these into another folder just so I am a little bit more organized here. So I'm gonna make a new folder here called tonyteaches.tech and then simply um, drag and drop those files in here. So let's make this window a little bit smaller so we can do that. And then drag the installer in here and drag the zip file in here. Okay, so um, let's go back over here. That's still working. The, the next step that we're basically gonna do is we're gonna take these two files 
and upload them to the server at tonyteaches.tech. Now, tonyteaches.tech still exists. We didn't do anything to that. All the visitors come to your website are still here. Um, they can still access your website. There's no changes on your old hosting provider at this point. Um, what I mean by uploading these files to tonyteaches.tech's FTP server is that um, this is this is not using this domain name yet. Okay, we still have our domain name server, DNS server, point it to our old host. So there's a little workaround hack that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you guys how to work with, and that's basically gonna um, edit our host file on our computer, regardless of if we're using Windows or Mac, so that whenever we go to tonyteaches.tech in our web browser, we're actually gonna go to this version of Tony Teaches Tech on WPX and not the version of Tony Teaches Tech on the old hosting provider that's available to the public. So um, if, that, if that doesn't make sense, uh, it'll make sense in just a minute here. Um, I'll explain it. But anyway, let's get some, while we're waiting for this still to finish creating, let's get some information here. So under service details, you'll see that you have uh, down here in a little bit, a server IP address. This is the IP address that we're gonna be working with. So we wanna make note of this. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open up a um, editor here, just a text file and paste that information in. So we have it here. So this is the IP address of our web server on WPX. And there you go, we are done with um, creating that creating that domain, adding that domain to our new hosting package here with WPX. So that's good. We can continue as expected. Okay, so there's our IP address. We're gonna need that in a bit. Um, but first, let's get some more information here. So we have that. Um, let's get the host name as well. I'll just paste that in here. I'm gonna make that a little smaller. And then we don't need anything else in here. The, do, 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 do. if we go to FTP users, we're gonna wanna create an FTP user for our domain name. Okay, so now that we have the domain name in here, we can add an FTP account. And I'm just gonna make it Tony at, tony.ftp at Tony Flow floor. <laughs> um, the domain we wanna associate that with is Serial Guru. And the password, um, I'm gonna pick the password that I usually use. Actually, you know what? Um, let's make this serial. Oops, no. Yes, okay, I, I completely screwed that up. I forgot. Add FTP account. Um, this is, we're not doing serial, it's Tony Teaches Tech. Okay, so the name is gonna be, uh, let's do flow. And we'll do Tony. Tony, why is it saying that? No, okay. Um, so make a username, make sure you pick the right domain. Now the password, I'm gonna put a password in here and I'm gonna have to change this later because you guys are gonna see it ultimately. So I'll just do something like, um, did I write one down here? No, I didn't. Yeah, I did, here it is. I knew it. So this is my password, I'm gonna confirm it. Uh, and then the username is gonna be TTT. Okay, so I'm gonna create that and I'm gonna write them down. So the username, oops, the username, we'll get that in a second. This is the password for FTP. So let's just say F FTP, username. Okay, that's created. So the username is this, okay. Now we don't wanna save that. So this is the, it's getting bigger and bigger. Username, line five, password, line six. We're gonna use that in just a second. We're gonna use all of this information in just a second. Okay. Now, maybe you'll have better luck than I did, but when I tried to go to the file manager and open the file manager and take these two files that we downloaded from our old hosting provider and drag and drop them into our public HTML directory, I had some issues um, and again, make sure if you're working with multiple uh, websites here, make sure you're in the right directory. So I have to go to, do, to domains, tonyteaches.tech and then my public HTML directory. This one is um, tonyflorida.com. So in here, you do have the option to drag and drop these in, but 
I didn't have any luck with that, they would time out, error out. So that's where we're gonna be doing it via FTP on the command line. Um, now, or okay, so you have a lot of options here. You can do it on the command line via FTP. If you're on Windows, I'm gonna show you a way to do it on Mac on Terminal. You can also download an FTP GUI, like uh, FileZilla is a popular one. And they have, a, they have a whole bunch of them. Just type in FTP client, whatever operating system you're using, and you'll find one. But if you're on Mac, you can follow these instructions because um, I think this is a really cool trick. So what we're going to do is, and basically the goal is just to take these files and copy them up here. So uh, what we're going to do is type in the following. So curl-t, the file that we want to copy. Oh, let's go to that, that folder. So CD desktop, it was in the WP folder, and then Tony teaches tech okay so once we're in here then we can do curl dash t and then the file that we want in the copy so installer.php and then the destination so ftp colon slash slash we're going to use this this um domain name wise there we go copy we'll paste that in here and then uh, dash dash user and then the username is this copy paste and then colon the password Tony teaches tech 2020 exclamation point paste okay so we can execute that and it's working and let's double check that it works so in here in our public HTML directory let's just refresh that there we go we see the installer in there perfect let's do it with the archive file so Pretty much the same thing. Um, I'm not going to retype it. I'll just use my arrow keys to get over to the file name, and then backspace, 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 backspace. Okay, and then the file name starts with 2020. There is the zip file, this guy right here. So all I have to do is hit enter, and this one will take a little bit longer to copy over, about two minutes. Hopefully, it'll go down in time. Um, and let me just see if we got everything that we needed to do. Yes, looks good. Okay, so while this is working in the background, I'm gonna minimize this, I'm gonna minimize this. We'll check on this in a minute. Actually, in 20 seconds, it'll be done. Um, and the next thing we wanna do is, like I told you about, we have our current website hosted on a different hosting website like a different hosting provider, but we don't want to disturb that. We don't want to change our DNS settings or anything like that. We want people to still be able to go to our website. So the workaround to work with this version of your website on your new hosting provider requires you to edit your host file. And like I said, there is a way to do this on Windows and Mac. Um, if you're on Windows, because this is on Mac, then just search how to change your host file on Windows, and it'll be the same exact procedures that we're gonna go through here. So um, let's leave this keep running, and I'm gonna open up a new terminal window. New window, okay? And we're gonna go to sudo, um, use whatever editor you wanna use, vim, etc, hosts, okay? And you can actually, if you don't wanna do this on the command line, you can actually go to your um, finder window, go to that location on your you know, hard drive and then edit it that way, which is probably easier for a lot of people. But for me, I'm gonna edit it in here. So if you are using Vim, then you can um, just type I to insert. And then what we're gonna do is associate the IP address of the web server with the domain name. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's open up that text again. And this is the IP address of our hosting okay so we're gonna paste that here on the left column and then on the right column we're gonna put the name of our domain so Tony teaches dot tech okay so right now if I go to Tony teaches tech I didn't save anything right now if I go to Tony teaches tech I go to the main website this one right here but when I save this file okay I'm gonna save it and if I use this, if I refresh this page, something weird will probably happen. It's going to use the cache version. But if I go into a guest window or an incognito window and go to tonyteaches.tech, you'll see that we go to um, the WPX default hosting site. Okay, and that's that's a good a good sign that we are um, 
making progress. And basically what's happening here is that when I request to go to that website after I edited the etc host file, my computer is gonna check that host file first to see if there's any association with an IP address with that domain name. And if there is, it's gonna use that instead of going out to the DNS servers. So that's basically all that we're doing. Um, we'll close this because we don't need it right now. And I did see that the copy has finished. So let's just double check that that's the case. So we refresh it and we have the archive up here. Very good. And you know what? I'm gonna actually open up the guest window again. And we're gonna go to Tony teaches.tech slash and let me show you where I'm getting this from so this is the this right here is the root of our HTML directory so physically on a server somewhere we have a folder called domains Tony teaches tech public HTML and then in there there's a file called installer.php so if we go to slash installer.php we'll load that code that HTML, that PHP code from um, that was generated, and now we can go through the installer of taking the clone the the that the duplicator plugin created for us and installing it on our new hosting provider. A couple gotchas here. Um, maybe they'll have this fixed by the time you watch it, but if you see something about zip archives or any of this stuff being disabled, there's one extra step that we have to take here, and that is basically to just simply extract this. So when you're in here, you can right click on the zip file and extract the archive. And um, I guess I guess the reason for this is that the hosting provider WPX doesn't have that program installed. So there we go, we extracted everything. So if we refresh this page here, we'll see that we can now go ahead and go through the process of setting up the WordPress install on our new hosting provider. So um, there's one option we have to change because the zip is not available. We just expand options down here like I just did and click on manual archive extraction. Click that you have read and accept all terms and click on next. Okay, making progress here. It's taken a look at that archive file. The next step here is to um, set up the database. So the host is gonna be localhost and although it looks like it's written there, we have to type it in. So L-O-C local host database. Now all this other information is gonna be back on our WPX hosting site um, dashboard. So we'll go back here, go into databases and in databases, we'll see that there has been a database created for Tony Teaches Tech. So I'm gonna copy that name of the database and put it in the database name. Now the database user is unintuitively not in here. It's actually under, I think it's service details. And if you go down to, oh, I just passed it right here. The FTP MySQL login details. Um, MySQL is the database. So we're gonna copy the username, Tony Floor, paste it in here and the password going to have to change this one too. copy the password, paste it in here. Now to make sure that we got those credentials correct and everything is pointed to where it should be pointed, we can test the database by clicking on this button. And we got two green buttons here, two green passes, a green pass and a green good. So we're good to go. Click on next. And this is just saying that anything that's in that database right now will be overwritten and that's okay because the database is empty. So click on okay. And now it is doing its magic. Click on next. If everything looks good, it should just be the old information from your old website. So that looks good to me. Click on next. And there we go. So that has finished. Um, there's one other step here. It just wants you to log in so that it can clean up after itself. Self? <laughs> so it can clean up after itself. So click on the admin login button and log in with your credentials. So that's for me, Tony, and then my password I have over here, paste, login, and there we go. So it just, all this stuff here is just saying that it cleaned up after itself. It got rid of that big zip file right here, all the other installer files and everything. Um, that's all gone. So we are good to go with that. Okay, so um, I think a good next step is to update the DNS settings, because right now we do have a new, uh, 
no, that's weird. That uh, I saw this before happen. I think it's just a caching issue. Okay, so um, right now we do have a working version of our website. I can prove that to you. Just not the home page for me for some reason because uh, if I go to posts and go to one of my posts here, I'll, I'll prove it to you. If you click on view this most recent blog post here, you'll see that it does properly serve that um, that blog post. And there you go. So this is this is my uh, blog post, and we can find that back on my old hosting provider. Um, but just trust me now that you have a copy of your WordPress website on your new hosting provider at this point. Anyway, it's better to go right over to your DNS settings and update those so that that propagation happens. So I got my domain name with Google Domains. I'm gonna find my domain name in here, and here it is: TonyTeaches.tech gonna go into DNS and go down to the bottom here and this like if you don't have Google domains the same type of uh, process you'll have to go through with whoever you bought your domain name from um, here is my IP address of my old hosting provider we want to update that with the IP address of our new hosting provider which we conveniently have here in this notepad so we'll just edit that change it from whatever it was before to the new one do that same thing here for the, oops, I think I copied it instead of pasted it, so copy that, oh jeez, copy, paste, without the space, okay. So now we have um, our DNS records for that domain name pointed to the new hosting provider, and uh, we have to undo what we did with the, um, the hosts file because I think actually let's let's hold off a second because I know it takes some time to propagate so let's let's make a couple more changes here to our back end uh, da, da, da. this is I want the guest window I don't want this that should be somewhere this one okay you'll see you, Make sure you're using like an incognito window or a guest window when you're working with this because you'll get some weird errors, some caching issues, kind of like we're seeing here too. Um, if you're using something that, if you're using a web browser that you visited your website before on, weird things are gonna happen. So it's best to just use incognito or a guest window. Okay, so a couple things we wanna do in here is to uninstall the duplicator plugin. I kinda of wish it uninstalled itself, but it doesn't. So come into your plugins and deactivate that and delete it. And then um, this'll be a little bit different for everybody, but if you already have W3 Total Cache plugin on your WordPress website, then you're. I guess you're still gonna to have to go through this, this um, setup. But if you don't have it, then I want you to install the W3 Total Cache plugin because that's something that um, WPX Hosting heavily relies on as far as integrating whatever optimizations it has at the server level with the WordPress level. So um, we're going to go through that here. We're going to actually upload a settings file for this plugin after you install it that is specific for this host, okay? And this is... Um, if you go into the, if you go into the WordPress website, um, I'm sorry. If you go into the WPX website, wpx.net/downloads, you'll see that they have this configuration file for W3 Total Cache. It's their set of recommendations for the settings in that plugin. So you can go ahead and download that and unzip it. And when you do, you want to come back over here to the plugin and import click on import export settings down here and then you want to import a configuration file the the, the here's the zip file that I downloaded but when you extract it there's a json file in it so you want to upload that and click on upload and it says the settings were successfully imported so there's no need to tweak anything in here um, maybe you want to minify that might be it but Everything else, as far as the settings are concerned, are what WPX Hosting recommends. So we're good to go there. Uh, as far as that's concerned, I think we're good to go. Um, so we can get out of this incognito window, this guest window, hopefully finally. 
let's go back into our terminal window and undo what we did with the hosts file. So sudo etc hosts. Oops. Command of, oh, it's sudo vim etc host. Okay. And then come down here and just delete that line that we added earlier. We don't need that anymore. So we can save that. And now let's test to see what IP address we get when we, whoops, when we ping our website. So if we ping Tony teaches dot tech, we want something, we want exactly this. We want 67.202.92.22 to come back. Let's see what we get. And we get that. That means that the DNS servers, at least the DNS servers that I'm looking at, have updated to associate Tony teaches tech with this IP address. So that's good. That means if we go to a new, how do I get out of this? If we go to a window, we should be able to see Tony teaches, Tony teaches tech being served from a new website, our new hosting provider. And uh, it seems like that's not the case, okay? So we're gonna need that, that incognito window, that guest window again, so let's try it. Tony teaches.tech. And again, I don't know why this comes up. It'll fix itself, it's a caching issue, even though we're in a guest window. But this is good that we see not secure, okay? That means we're, um, we're not uh, redirecting or anything like that. But if we try to go to HTTPS colon slash slash our website, we should see a self-signed certificate. And it is, it's a root certificate, which is good. That means we're looking at the right thing here. And now we can install a SSL certificate through WPX hosting. So let's do that next. Um, if we go back to our WordPress, uh, not our WordPress, our WPX dashboard, we can come into our manage websites section and find our new domain name here. Click on the SSL button associated with that row and we want to install a free certificate. So click on that and install. Are you sure you want to do that? Yes, I am. And that, you know, I, I this varies. It could take anywhere from, you know, they say 10 seconds here up to a couple minutes. So we'll see what our luck is with this. Um, but when that's finished, if we refresh this page, we should see a, you know, the typical lock icon and we should be able to look at the SSL certificate and see that it was issued from uh, the, the issuing authority is Let's Encrypt. So that just finished. Let's Encrypt SSL certificate was installed. Very good. Let's test it out. Let's come back over here, refresh the page and we're good. So we got the lock icon. If we look at the certificate, it's valid and it is issued by Let's Encrypt. So we are good to go there. Um, last thing you want to do in here is to go into our settings and we want to change the redirect behavior. So this is confusing for some, for some, and sometimes for me, but there's basically like six different versions of your website. Okay. So you have, you want to go to the redirect section here. You have your website. Let's say, let's just use example.com. You have example.com. You have www.example.com. Then you have HTTPS www.example.com. And then you have HTTPS example.com. Like there, there's just a bunch of them. You basically, what we're going to do here is redirect all the traffic to I prefer the non www version of my website. So that way everybody's going to the same place. So go ahead and change that and save those changes. And um, do, do, do. when that's finished, this one takes, you know, it depends as well, um, some, some amount of time. But when that's finished, we should be able to just open up a new tab here and go to tonyteaches.tech and it should redirect us to the HTTPS version, which we didn't see before, but hopefully that will happen now. So that looks like it finished successfully. Let's test it out, hit enter. And um, it did not work, but that I think that means because we were in the same guest window, again, caching. So close out of the old guest window, open up a new guest window, 
try it out. So uh, Tony teaches tech hit enter. And there we go. So we're redirected to the HTTPS version of the website with that same Let's Encrypt certificate installed. Okay, so the last thing here is just this weird, weird, weird artifact of the homepage not working. If we go to slash about, you'll see that my about page serves correctly. And um, you go to my contact. That, that works fine. My resources, that works fine. It's everything except the home page. So if we go to the home page, we'll get that weird page. But you know, we can search for um, Python, right? Nope, nope, that didn't work. So let's, let's give it a few minutes. I'm gonna pause the video. We'll come back, we'll refresh the page, and hopefully by then you'll see that that weird, you know, the weird, whatever weird thing's happening right now has gone away. So um, I'll see you in a couple seconds. Okay, guys, I'm back. I don't think the issue's finished just yet. Let's see. Um, no, it's not. Um, my, my personal theory about this whole thing, and this is actually good because I wanted to talk about it anyway, is that it has something to do with the, um, the CDN that's built into WPX. So if we go to our WPX dashboard and go down to WPX Cloud, that's the name of their, CP, or their CDN, um, which is actually really cool because it's it's include it like for free uh, I, and I think it's unlimited which is awesome because a lot of other managed WordPress hosting providers charge you after a certain point or charge you from zero like so for example maybe a managed WordPress hosting provider will give you 100 gigabytes of CDN traffic per month and then they'll charge you per gigabyte after that if you exceed that limit um, WPX doesn't have anything like that you just get to use their custom built CDN network, which if you're not familiar, CDNs are essentially just taking all the assets of your website, like uh, basically mainly your pictures, those are the heavy ones, and moving them all around to different locations around the world. So if somebody's over in Singapore and they request your website, instead of going all the way back to you know it being hosted in the US and then sending it back to the Singapore they'll go to a server locally in Singapore to get all your images and then it'll take a lot quicker to just pull locally than it does to go halfway around the world so that's the that's the benefit of a CDN uh, but um, I think like I was saying my theory is that the the CDN is clashing with my old CDN from Kinsta so uh, what maybe is a good, if you're seeing something weird like that, it should just come into the, the WPX cloud option or the tab here and just empty the cache for that and hit yes. And this, there's a delay here. We, we might not be able to, um, to see this in real time, but because it, you know, it says here, it will take approximately one hour for your site to start loading through the cloud again. Um, but that's okay. Uh, maybe it will. Maybe it'll be quicker. Um, that's okay. Uh, I still, yeah, let's just try it. Let's just see if we go to, 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 to let's start a fresh guest window. All right, let's do an incognito window. Go to Tony Teaches Tech. Oh, there we go. Okay, so that, that might have been it. Um, now let's, let's just double check that. If we go to View Developer, Developer Tools, and we refresh the page and we look at our network tab here, we can see where our s assets are coming from. And it looks like um, they're coming from a remote IP address 250. I think these are being served from my old website still. So I don't think that, cause this, this, is not, this is not that IP address right here, right? This is definitely still from my old website. The DNS uh, propagation hasn't finished. So I think what's best is, to just, uh, I hate to do this, but to pause the video again and then come back and then we can see how my performance has changed in fasterslow.com because I don't want to run it yet. Um, remember, we were at a 47 before. I want to see what that gets back up to, not back up to, what it gets up to um, or down to if we're looking at the page speed down here. Anyway, um, pause, we'll come back and everything should be propagated by then. Okay, guys, I'm back. I had enough time to eat dinner, so maybe about an hour or so. So let's check it out again here. Tony teaches tech, and you'll see that it is being served. Let's just double check that we're looking at the right thing here. Developer tools, and if you go to the network tab, refresh the page. 
and you'll see, uh, let's see here, that we got everything being served from an IPv6 IP address, which is great. Um, we got the new IP address from WPX hosting that ends in .22. Um, so it looks good. It looks like, let's find an image here, uh, JPEG. This one is being served from not the not the hosting account, but the CDN, it looks like. There's some other images on here. Here's some images. These are being served from the, the host. So I guess it just depends. Um, maybe we need more time for the CDN to propagate, but I'm happy with this. This is looking good. Let's get out of here. Uh, let's run that faster, slow test again. Like I said, we got uh, 47 last time we ran it this morning. So let's go back to faster, slow, and it, it remembers the results. So if we type in Tony teaches that tech and we can profile it, this will take a few seconds. And while it's running, um, let me just wrap up the video by saying, uh, I guess you see that they're like this is never going to be a smooth process when you're migrating in a website. You'll you'll see things pop up here and there, and um, you just got to work through it. And my hope is by releasing this video to you guys that it shows you how to overcome some of those those hurdles um, by using tools like like the ones I've showed you um, and the workarounds and all that stuff. So. Um, yeah, I, I think if you got some value out of this, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, please subscribe to this channel because that shows me your support. Um, right here, um, the, the report is still running. And we're looking at, at most, three seconds the page being loaded at. And well under two seconds for a lot of the USO, USA locations. A lot of locations in Europe, it looks like, not... South America, South Africa, and Asia pretty much are the ones that are above two and a half seconds, which is phenomenally quicker than what we were seeing before. Um, I, this is gonna, probably going to take a while for this to run. I might have to pause the video again to show you the results, or maybe I'll just wrap it up and show you at the very end. But uh, just that difference of who your hosting provider is can really... Um, boost the performance of your website. You know, uh, that's that's what got me down the path of looking at WPX hosting to begin with. Is, you know, it's it's fantastic reviews. Fan, like if you look at their Trustpilot rating, it's like basically five out of five stars. Um, the 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 founder, he's like anti big corporation, which is really cool, and it allows him to like be in control of not be in control, but like not be corporatized and make all these like you know big decisions with big teams it's just like you know some really good engineers working on uh building a platform that is optimized for running wordpress websites which i i can see right here that this is um this is exactly what they set out to do so with that being said um thank you guys for watching this video if you if you made it this far um Please, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps with getting other people on YouTube to see this video because, you know, when there's a lot of support for this video, YouTube recognizes that and will share it with other people. So please give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe, like I said. I already asked you to do that, but just one more time. And, uh, yeah, with that being said, I will see you in the next video.